Gambit lovers, today I want to share with you my Bushgas Gambit victories that are not only super fun and exciting games, but I think really important to Bushgas theory in general. And so I hope that you guys can also apply these ideas in your own games as well. And so here, here's the first game. I was playing a Fide Master who does not have the best record against me apparently, but we opened with our favorite opening, Bishop C5 offering our opponent to take this pawn, Knight C6 here, and we get our favorite Stafford-esque capture with d takes c6, opening our queen and our bishop. And here my opponent immediately plays not a very good move. Uh, it, it's, it's a little bit different than the Stafford because after like say d3, we can play f5 with, without our knight already blocking the f-pawn, which allows us to make some pawn trades there and some good targets on f2 and on e4. But bishop to c4 my opponent played, which I believe is also one of the most common moves. And now here I played knight f6, which transposed into a very good line of the Stafford. Uh, the engine is a little bit upset with me because it wanted this little trick, takes, takes, and queen d4 check to um, win a pawn. But I was looking for some excitement and played knight f6. My opponent just protected e4, which is a blunder. And here, I think if you don't already know the trick, I would suggest you to pause the video and figure out what to play here for black. So black can also play bishop takes f2 again and queen d4 check. I'll note queen d4 immediately is not as good of an idea because queen here kind of defends everything. But black does have another very good move here, and it is knight to g4, which I played in the game and earned an exclam for. And it's because of d takes c6 that white does not have d4, because there's the queen controlling it now, and also the bishop defends the knight from the queen. So we're hitting f2, and here white should actually know to play rook f1, which nobody's going to know to do. They're going to castle, of course. And now here, queen h4. Another exclam and uh, classic Stafford idea here, most of the credit to Eric Rosen, but we are threatening checkmate. Uh, white really has to play pawn to h3. And now we just take f2 with multiple things controlling that square. And here white is completely lost. My opponent, if they played rook takes f2, queen takes f2, king h1. Here's another really good pause the video moment. That's also on the brand new subreddit that I'll get to later in this video. But the move is bishop to g4, which is just a really nice move in general. Because if queen takes, there's checkmate over here. And if h takes, there's checkmate over here with the bishop controlling this. This is all just lots of fun. So white needs to know to block like this, which is which is tough. Um, in this position, though, my opponent did neither of those things, playing bishop takes f7, and here it's very important to play either here or here, but not take this bishop, because after which d4, we put ourselves in this pin with the knight. The knight is no longer a force, but rather a liability. It can't take the queen, and here, actually, I think black is losing some stuff. But so, correctly, either just move the king out of the way, and now my opponent played queen to f3, which just allows, you know, a nice way to end the game. Here, this is double check, uh, so my opponent must move the king. Knight g5 check is just winning the queen next turn. So here, takes, takes, and I checkmated my opponent, who is a FIDE master, 2450, and not too many moves. I just thought that was a fun game to open this up. So my next game, let me hide that, was a walrus gambit. <laughs> a walrus gambit, which is a fun, uh, a fun line. I believe e5 is the worst move on the board, uh, according to Stockfish, offering this pawn, ac6, but we get the Stafford... The Stafford capture, if, if I may call it that, d takes c6, which is a very fun capture because it opens the, the bishop, it opens the queen. This idea is used in the mainline Petrov variation. And so here, I mean, white is a totally blank slate. I mean, they have a, any option here to develop. g3 is one of the more common moves and one of the choices of the engine as well. But like, we can try and take advantage of whatever they do. Like here, we're going to play h4, we're going to play here, we're going to castle, we're going to play bishop h3. So like, I don't know, let, let, let me show you maybe an example of how this might go. Oh, sorry, white needs a move. So now white starts doing stuff. Castles. Okay, we attack the pawn. They defend the pawn. Bishop h3. So this is like the standard way to attack a fianchetto. And, you know, if we get another move here, then we can make these trades. We push this pawn to open this h file. We got rid of that uh, bishop that was fianchettoing. And now queen h3, queen takes h2. But this is if white does nothing to deal with these threats. But that's basically black's plan. And so, I mean, otherwise, there's like d4. But knight f6, knight e4, in my Lee Chess Challenge video, which is right above my head at the moment, um, I, I, I actually co cover these lines a bit. There, 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 there are some very fun tricks with putting the knight here and also trying to get to f2. But anyway, I mean, the walrus gambit, it's dubious. You know what you're getting into. But my opponent played e4 with a totally blank slate. I don't know if they realize this, but knight f6 is a transposition to the Stafford, or bishop c5 is a transposition to the bush gas. Depending on your persuasion, my persuasion is certainly the latter. Or bishop to e6 if you're if if you're stockfish, but but none of us are. So here my opponent also played bishop to c4 instead of um, better moves such as d3 or c3 to prepare uh, d4. 
And if, if, if you don't know Bush Gas Theory, you have to watch the video above my head right now, which uh, uh, is the original video on the Bush Gas Gambit and outlines all this theory. But knight to f6 here, and so we see kind of the same patterns merging in this game, where I play queen to h4. This is a brand new player who's 2377, and this is the same game. But here we take with the bishop. Because the point of taking with the bishop in this line is that if king to h1, we can slip in there with queen g3 and queen to h2, threatening checkmate. So if h takes g4, now we can come back. But taking with a knight is probably objectively better, as I said in the other line. But this was just a fun game because here, well, h5 is a better move to actually hold my knight because we have h takes g4 for checkmate, opening the rook. And otherwise, if we can keep the knight there, maybe we can come back around for, for our other checkmating idea. I figured that out soon enough, but here we attack the bishop. And now I play h5 because I realize, oh, this is a good idea. I should put my knight back there. So when d4 came, that's what I did. And I got two exclamation marks for it. Now a proposed queen trade. I mean, we're already up in exchange, but instead I wanted to deliver checkmate here. So my opponent tried to block, stop this with bishop to f4 to control the h2 square. But we have here check. And now it just takes. And uh, next, my, my opponent actually resigned here on their own turn, but I was just taking this bishop after which I'd be a ruck ahead and probably playing there to open the h file another good open the h file idea of trading off that pawn to make the ruck a killer so two straight opponents actually that are very high rated that i kind of got with the same trick I, it more belongs to the uh, to the stafford gambit than to the bush gas gambit but i just thought that was a fun way to kick off this video and so here white has another option other than knight takes c6 and allowing us this stafford capture it's going back knight f3 and so here i just wanted to to show a couple things that that i got in this game, so very often it looks like a Urusov Gambit in this position. We're playing d5 to challenge the center. White cannot play d4, which is a very important point, because uh, otherwise that would really solve most of their problems. Knight c3, queen h5. And the important point is they can't play d4 again, but my opponent here did. And the point is we can take it, actually. I got an exclam for it. But when they capture, we can just trade queens, and bishop takes knight. And here, so, you know, we took a pawn there. And here, this is just a completely equal line game, and I, you know, eventually went on to win this game. But that was kind of the point, and that sets the table for really fun games like this, where when you get to the same position, here, you're, I, well, my opponent quickly sort of transposed, but you, they don't have this option to play d4. And so this was kind of like a, a really insane kind of game. But there's this bishop d6 idea, and I talked about this in a prior video of mine that I, I actually like f5, f4 as a better plan, but this was before that. But bishop to d6, kind of the point of playing queen to h5 is that we're going to take that knight, and we're going to try and get this pawn. And if they play pawn to h3, it sets the table for some sacrifices, or sets the table for sacrifices of this persuasion. <laughs> so this is a little bit crazy stuff, but our idea is basically bishop to h2 check, and we can go back and forth for a draw. It's kind of an option. Otherwise, we can play knight d4, trying to remove that knight and just go in there with queen h2. But if black kind of if white kind of ignore this problem, we're going to go king to b8 and we're going to take on h3. So we capture over here. This, this was a really insane game. Yeah, knight d4 here would have been very, very strong to eliminate that knight as a defender and to try to play queen to h2. Let me see if I can eliminate these arrows. There we go. Um, so rook to e8 I played, which was not a good idea. But now check, and now this was a very difficult move, but was bishop to g3, actually, to try and sneak in there with queen there. But this was just a wild game. I played rook takes bishop here, the idea being I can capture back and win something. I mean, it looks like a good move. There was takes, takes check. I had to sacrifice to <laughs> bring my knight back, try and go queen h2. And I should have gone queen h2 here. I'm not sure why I didn't. But j j just kind of a wild game. Rook here was threatening to attack my knight and create some sort of pins. Knight there. So now I'm trying to play g5, which I can play f4, and then I can get access to maybe that h1 square if I make that knight move. And that's what ended up happening here, although my opponent, I mean, we're, we're both in such time trouble at this point. My opponent had a good option here, which was check, make the king move, and then take the knight so it attacks the rook. But in the game, my opponent takes the knight and allows me to escape this kind of backdoor pin by playing check first and now taking the rook. And now this pawn is just a beast with f3 causing all sorts of problems along the second rank. So this was pretty fun finish to the game. But just a pretty fun game while, uh, I, I mean, I sacrificed that same rook uh, multiple times with rook takes e3, with rook takes e2. My queen was all over the h file. Fun game that um, we get to play in, in this line. We're, we're able to sh shift our queen over to h5 and our bishop back to d6.
So here is another game with a different sort of line. So bishop to c4, you guys know, is probably the meat of Bush Gas Gambit theory because the point is we are not transposing back into some sort of Italian. We are playing knight f6 and offering them to capture this pawn. To capture this pawn, after which knight c6 launches some insane lines where f7 is hanging twice. There's two different options, but we want to play bishop takes f2. There's some Traxler-esque ideas here, but a lot, a lot of fun, crazy bush gas theory. But if you guys are like me, sometimes, even though knight takes e5 is the most common move, sometimes they play a move like castles, and you're very frustrated because you really wanted to play bush gas gambit, but maybe now you're stuck in some sort of like Italian game and, and it's just like boring, and this isn't what you wanted to be playing. And I've had that problem too. Too many people just playing like castles, and it's annoying. And so I realized, I checked this position, and we can just play knight takes e4. And it's a really challenging move. I mean, I, I'm sure they expect us to just play like d6 or knight c6 and transpose into their stuff, but we're just going to play knight takes e4, taking this pawn. And you'll note here, the second or third most common move is actually rook to e1, which is pretty funny because there's just bishop takes f2 and taking the rook. So that's quite the blunder and already a point in our favor. But so here in the game, my opponent played knight takes e5, which is one of the better moves. And I'll cover actually d3 and d4. But let's look at the game here. So knight takes e5. Can I eliminate these arrows? Jeez. Give me one second. Oh, best move. I turned that off, didn't I? All right. All right, knight takes e5. We played d5 here. Because knight takes e5 had a tempo on f7 with the bishop and the knight attacking it. So we played d5, kicking the bishop. And now we have some fun. We play knight takes f2. And now here, if white's really smart, they'll actually know to play like queen to f3, but it's, or, or I, I believe it's queen to e2, but it's almost impossible. I don't think anybody's finding that. Of course, they're going to take that knight that was attacking their queen, and that was causing some sorts of problems onto their king. And so we take it again, and the point is we go check. And now here, white needs to be very, very precise, because if they play g3 or king to g1, we are going to play queen d4 check and take the knight. And at this point, we are up too much material. We are up just an exchange, a rook for a bishop. And so white can't allow that. So they need to play king to f1. The only move, my opponent found it. They got an exclaim for it. <coughs> the only move to not lose the knight because a check here for the knight allows knight f3. So we needed the queen d4 check. But it allows us to just take h2. And so here we've given a rook and two pawns for a knight and a bishop, which is already a pretty good trade. We're tagging the knight. This king appears to be in some serious danger. My opponent played queen e2, which I think is pretty natural. I think knight f3 is the recommendation of the engine. Attacking our queen and preparing here just net knight back. And so what I would recommend here is castles. Just getting our king into safety. White should probably na nab this pawn. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy fun, fun line. So our queen's really the only piece out. But we can get another piece out with a really creative, really good idea here. And it's a5 is the move I would recommend. You can pause the video and even try and figure out why I recommended a5. But the point is this rook. We're going to play rook a6, and we're going to shift him along to either f6 or g6. And we're going to cause problems on that king, which is really not that well defended. And we're going to get to f6 pretty quickly. Bishop f3, bishop g4, we're going to put a lot of pressure there. So I think this is a fun position and, and you know, still forces the action, um, even if they try to decline our bush gas gambit. So, let, sorry, let me get back to the game. Queen e2, so I castled out of this danger. My opponent's just playing knight c3, and I mean, it's a natural move, but it gets two question marks because the position's hard to play. Rook e8 gets an exclam because we're now attacking that knight twice with a pin. My opponent here should play d4 to protect it, but just knight c6 here attacks d4, attacks e5. It's not a fun position for, for white to be playing anyway. And here, I think my opponent just didn't even see that my queen was attacking this, and after I took that knight, they just promptly resigned. Oh, no, I'm sorry, they didn't resign. I had one more trick. So they played queen f2, check. Here, now this is a good pause the video moment. So if you said rook f5, you're not quite correct because we want to make that king move away from the queen to take it, but rook f5 allows bishop to f3 to block. So we have here rook e1, which is a nice little finish. After king takes, I would just win the queen here. And so this is fun. But this is my fun new revolution bush gas theory. Just take e4 and then just try to take f2. So here, I'll get back to it. If they play d3, which I believe is another one of the more common moves, we also take f2. Okay, and we have we have our trade over here, and now we castle, and so we have a rook and two pawns for a bishop and knight. So it's interesting. They can play knight takes e5, 
which is one of the recommendations of the engine, I believe. But queen h4 check is just pretty much a transposition. They should play king f1, allowing queen takes h2 again. If king g1 again, we have this check winning too much material. So, I mean, if they don't, if they play like an ac3 or something, we play here c6 and we just try and play d5. We have a very nice center, and I think it's an imbalanced position. And I, 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 I think this is a fun position to to be playing. I think with with either with either color, but d5. I think we we have a good center. It's very playable. I would certainly play this position. D4 is a tricky move because D4 is really trying to blow this open. I mean, we've violated kind of some opening principles here. We haven't castled yet, so D4 is really trying to take advantage of that. So you guys should need to know this good counter punch, which is D5. D5. <laughs> so, so now our knight's secure enough. If they move the bishop, we can take this and get away with it. So if they take our bishop, we take here. And now white has like a couple options. They can trade queens into an equal end game, or they can play queen e2. They takes. They're going to be collecting these pawns. Our knight's going to come back, and the position is is approximately equal. So that's what white needs to actually know what to do. But if they play castles and allow knight takes e4, it's they didn't expect to be challenged, but now they're being challenged. And that's exactly what happened to my opponent here in this game. So this is the line I would be proposing to you. I'll note one other thing. c3 is a move I've been seeing a lot. Like, you know, they think they're playing the Joko piano. They think it's this position. It's not. This is just a pawn, guys. This is just a bond. We're attacking f2, so they need to play d4. We take it. We give a check. We play d5. We castle it. We're literally just up a pawn for nothing. So c c3 is, is, is really just a blunder. Uh, if white really wants to avoid all complications, they can play d3. But I have another video actually on Bush Gas Gambit Deniers that I'll link above me, but I think this theory was, was, was very, very important. So this is the last game of the video. But it is a fun one. It is a crazy one because we finally got to see knight takes e5 and knight c6 here. God, I don't know how many times I can disable those arrows. But allowing the, the, the captures on f7. So my opponent opted for knight takes f7. Bishop takes f2. Lots and lots of fun. Takes knight takes e4 check. And so I said in my original video, I believe, I, I'm, I'm like, K king g1 has to be played. Every other move loses. And that is true. But I'm not sure if I really covered why. So there's a lot of moves here, and my opponent actually played king to e3, and I was kind of clueless. I'm like, I know this is wrong, but I don't know why. And so my queen was under attack, and I just played queen to e7, which I think is natural enough. But the best move here is queen to f6. So queen to f6 is like threatening checkmate, kind of. Uh, it's, it's interesting. So we can talk about a couple lines. So white should play rook f1 or queen to f3 or something to cover f2. And if they do that, it's just queen d4 check and take this bishop with check. And here, black is winning. If they play king takes knight, <laughs> which I believe was the question on your mind, we play d5 check. And you know, if king takes, this is checkmate. That king's now taken just too many things. It's wandered so far. But anything else, we can win the queen in some sort of line with some check. So for example, bishop takes, we go check. King has to go here. Check, we win the queen. And we're winning other material as well. So white's losing after king takes knight for that reason. So queen f6 is what I should have played. Threatening queen to f2. So if some other move, there's queen to f2 and d5. And I believe here, so knight takes or bishop takes. This is checkmate, yeah. And otherwise, this is checkmate. <laughs> some fun lines. And other otherwise, this is checkmate. So queen to f2 and queen to d4 are, are our threats in this position if the king comes to e3. If the king goes to e1, I think this is the simplest. Queen h4 is killer. Because queen f2 next turn... If g3, we just go knight takes g3, take the rook. Uh, if king e2, knight check is going to win the queen. All sorts of fun lines here. Bishop f1 loses the tether on this knight. I think we can even just castle and just take everything on this f-file. <laughs> and white is completely losing here. So white can't play like that. There's king to f1, allowing castles. <laughs> just castles because they stepped into that f-file pen. So like I was saying, king g1... <clears throat> really provides them the most possible cover here because our, our next move is really just d5, detethering the bishop from that knight, and this rook's going to be a complete monster on that file. And then otherwise, there's uh, king f3, but just queen f6 check is just transposing back into the, our, our, our king e3 lines, right? Where this is leading to the checkmate or, or winning the queen or something of the sort. Um, and king to e2 is also playable. Queen to e7 is in that case a better move. Because here we're threatening knight c3 check to win the queen. And there's no real easy way to get out of it. If the king were on e3, this queen can maybe come out, as, as actually you saw in the game. 
But here, the, like queen e1 or something is the only way to prevent an ac3 check from just winning the queen. So king g1 is what white should play, queen to h4. This is all covered in the original video. So king to e3, I played queen e7 in the game. And so here the position is apparently equal, but we both blunder so many times. Here, literally, I should just play an ac3 check and win the queen. I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> but is my opponent a title play? Yeah, he's an international master, and, and I'm a FIDE master, but we're blundering all over the place. I mean, these lines are crazy at every level. This is what I'm saying. So I played d5 here, which is a, a classic bush gas idea, trying to get the bishop out and castle as quickly as possible. Check, which is a good, great move. So I try to block it. Knight takes, which is which is two two more exclaims for them. So making that knight useful as well. But so, he, I mean, it's a crazy position. I'm trying to play knight check to, you know, use my own queen to give a check and try and take their queen, but my queen's under attack. So I had to get the queen out of the way. I gave that check. And now d4. Instead of, this king really needs to hightail it and just run back home. And then there's a lot of threats against my own king. But d4 uh, was finally the nail in the coffin, I believe. Takes or king f3 was. This king need, needs to come back. It needs to come back home. But king f3 actually just hangs checkmate in one. So <laughs> there's a, a, a few games here where arguably I just got lucky. I think that's a pretty good argument. But oftentimes you get lucky when you play the Bushcast Gambit. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I am about to hit 1,000 subscribers. And I want to do something for you guys. I'm like, I am so grateful to my supporters. I want to do something that you guys would love and so i have created i have created r slash gambit chess a brand new subreddit where you guys can get featured on youtube this is this is the point so r slash gambit chess i made a post about it uh but this is this is my first video where i'm talking about it so there's only nine members at the moment which is really eight more than i thought there'd be but we have daily gambit puzzles. This one's from the Bush Gas Gambit. This one you might guys might remember from the video and where actually a few people have answered. But part of the point is every single week, I will be posting uh, an opportunity for you guys to post your best games in the gambits from my YouTube channel. And you guys can upvote them. And the best games voted, I will do an analysis on your games every week. And this is just a forum for, for, for you guys to discuss all, all the gambiting fun. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be moderating it. Um, and, and, and I'm just so, so, so excited for this subreddit. I'll, I'll, I'll link it in, in, in the chat below, but it is r slash gambit chess. And I'll be soon inviting Jonathan Schrantz and, uh, Eric or Eric Rosen to also bring their followers into this subreddit and they can co-moderate it with me maybe. But thank you guys so, so much for your support. It means so much to me. I, I think at the moment I'm at like 980 something. Maybe by the time I'm uploading this video, I'll be over 1000 and I'll make YouTube partner. But thank you guys so, so much for everything. Uh, be sure to subscribe and have a fantastic day.